It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with the Riyadh season. Mr. George Lockhart um, out here in Ireland. Uh, I think we met in Saudi last time. Uh, how's things going for you uh, as a person in, in, in the work that you do in the, in the boxing world? And obviously your work's getting recognised with the stuff you're doing, Joe. Uh, everything's great. Uh, 2023 was an amazing year. We started off with Tommy winning with Jake. Um, went to uh, Tyson, or I'm sorry, Joe beating um, uh, Django, then Simon King, then Tyson beating Ningano, and then finishing off the year with uh, Joe beating Wilder. So it was it was five and zero, oh, wasn't a bad year. Looking for better things for 2024. You know, um, just for the fans who may be watching you for the first time, just want to give them a, a little bit of an insight into. What your role is within Joe's team and what is it uh, George Lockhart does? Uh, so basically I overlook anything that's not boxing. Uh, recovery time, strength and conditioning, nutrition, um, sleep. You know, I'm the guy that monitors everything to make sure like this is the intensity that we can go. This is what intensity we should be at um, and kind of get game plan for the, the conditioning. Uh, Andy Lee comes up with the overall game plan and I work around what, what he's looking for and try and, you know, make Joe the best version of himself come fight day. Because we see a lot of this sort of stuff now because people have opinions on this type of work with fighters because uh, the old school people will say, oh, you don't need any of this. You just eat your, your basic carbs and protein and do it the old school way. So you tell me why your way is better than the old school way. Um, I think a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions because a lot of people don't understand how to read the the science of the data. For example, like when I put a heart rate monitor on Joe, anybody that's ever put a heart rate on a, a monitor on him, they've always like, we've got to put you in the red zone, put you in the red zone, put you in the red zone. Um, and that's not what the purpose of it is. You know, the, the purpose of it is to see how fast he's recovering, how fast he's, his heart rate's dropping between rounds and then being able to dictate what we need to work on based on that, whether it be aerobic capacity, muscular endurance, cardiorespiratory endurance, we have to uh, increase his anaerobic threshold. Um, but doing all this stuff, like monitoring his HRV, every morning we, we monitor the HRV, that dictates how hard he can train, how hard he's been training. So, you know, if it's really, really high consecutively, that means that we need to up the training because his body's not getting the stimulus that it needs. Too much training, it keeps lowering and lowering. That means that, you know, it could affect his immune system. He's not going to recover. And the longer he's at a low state, the longer it's going to take to actually recover. Okay, that's, uh, You know, um, I don't know if you look into the history. I know you worked with a lot of UFC guys before as well. Um, how different is that to what they did years ago? Like, you know, for example, if you put a monitor, I know you can't do it hypothetically speaking, if you put all that stuff on Muhammad Ali, for example, you know, what, what do you think you'd get? What, what, do you reckon you could improve somebody like from that era hypothetically yes i mean i mean I, I would like to say yes definitely um with the the science and everything that we have available today i mean we're able to keep people from overtraining which was a big thing that joe had you know with boxing what i've seen and i, I hate to generalize but it's either zero or a hundred you know it's like we go ball to the wall pain is progress you know if the if the workout didn't hurt didn't it, people don't feel like they achieved everything or anything you know and um you know i use the example of like strength training you know the, the purpose isn't to go in and, and um, blow your chest out if you're doing chest the purpose is to lift more weight and to do that sometimes you have to take a longer rest that longer rest isn't going to hurt as much but you are going to be able to lift more weight and that's what we're trying to do we're not trying to create a higher pain tolerance what we're trying to do is increase performance um in a way that is is easy for joe obviously we do have to you have to turn up a notch every every so often that's what sparring's for um and i think a lot of people have a misconception that strength and conditioning is is based on that my job is to make sure that his sparring is top notch based on his sparring is what he's going to do with strength and conditioning but we're gonna we're gonna fix those those small l's and stuff like that but to answer your your question a lot of it comes down to the belief you know if you believe in the food and you're consistent with it you're going to see results if you're not then you're not going to see those results and the thing about joe is that everything that i give him everything that i do for him he does to a t and as you can see you're seeing a lot of results not only with um, his aesthetics but with his performance 
Well, talking about aesthetics, we've seen uh, a lot of people comment on Joe's uh, glow in his face. Even now, I just said to him a bit ago that he he looks like uh, the guy that made his debut all them years ago. He looks young in the face. So I know you don't want to give your secrets away, but give us something like people out there watching. What can they do to try and look, you know, take 10 years off the face? <laughs> um, you know, they're, they're definitely... No secrets, and I want to, you know, my job is to help as many people as I can. You know, with, with boxing, with MMA, that was always my goal. Um, with Joe, a lot of it comes down to the nutrition. A lot of people eat sporadically. They eat what's quote-unquote healthy. You know what I mean? You know, people will be like, is peanut butter good? Well, it depends on when you eat it, why you're eating it. Um, water consumption, a lot of people are like, well, I drink a lot of water. Well, how much is a lot of water? Do you monitor that? When you start monitoring these things, you actually find out how inconsistent you are, you know. And um, with Joe, we monitor all that stuff. And consistency and simplicity. If, if, if I could tell anybody anything, simplicity and consistency is, is the keys to everything. Don't try and a lot of people during New Year's, they, they, they're they like, oh, I'm going to eat this. And they try and eat perfectly. And they're able to do that for a week or two. But let's say you start like, I'm going to drink a gallon of water every day. And you do that for a full year. You're consistent with that. You're going to see more changes, better changes, uh, increased performance based on that small uh, movement versus trying to eat perfect for 10% for of the time. Fascinating. And obviously in your field of work, there's a lot of different people that do what, exactly what you do. Uh, what stands you out from the rest? Um, You know, I think... I, I always ask the question, why? You know, my dad always told me, he says, one time he told me, he said, you know, 99% of people can't read in this world. And I told him, I was like, dad, that's BS, you know? And uh, he's like, well, read this. And it was a it was a beer can. He said, I said, that says Miller High Life, champagne of beers. He said, did you read that or did you regurgitate it? He says, regurgitation means that you see a word and then you recite it, you, you repeat it back. He says, to be able to read means that you see a word for the very first time and you, you understand how to pronounce it, what makes it it, an at or an all, you know? And I think with nutrition, a lot of people do what they've always done and they don't understand the why behind it. You know, with my curiosity, I want to understand why. If I'm telling Joe to do something, I'm going to explain to Joe why I'm doing it. Anybody that I'm working with, I want to explain why I'm doing it. I want to have a reason behind it. So in case something goes wrong, if I understand the why, then I can, I can adjust based on that individual person. And um, I think that the last thing I want to ask you, uh, George, is um, why and how does uh, Joseph Parker beat Sang? I have worked with more champions than anybody out there. You know, that's that's not a boast. It's just a fact. Um, I've worked with Connor. I've worked with Tyson. I've worked with Frankie Hager. I've worked with uh, Holly Holmes. I mean, you, you, you name a champion, I've, I've worked with them. Uh, but I've never stayed with them for long periods of time. Joe, I'm staying with until the end of his career. Um, when I when I started working with Joe, I it was I was dumbfounded at how high he had made it off just sheer tenacity and specialty. His boxing IQ was so good that he became a world champion. When I started doing strength and conditioning, he had no strength, he had no muscular endurance, he had no cardiorespiratory endurance, he had no aerobic capacity, he had anything. But he won because of like I said, sheer tenacity. And I told him, I was like, man, we build the base. And that pe that that spear that he won the world title with is just going to become greater and greater. I honestly think that Joe's going to be the great. You know, I think in the future here, he's going to be beating everybody. I think Zang's just the next person in line. I said that about Wilder. Um, I think Zang's the next one in line, and then it's just next after next after next. I don't think anybody's going to be able to compete with his – Boxing IQ, his specialty, his power, speed, he's got everything, and now he's got the base to, to back it up. Top man, George. I uh, appreciate that. And, you know, just a uh, last thing for yourself. Uh, do you only work with fighters? And if a member of the public wanted to speak to you, and, you know, do you help out people like that? And if you do, how can they reach out? Yeah, I work with uh, I work with everybody. You know, I've, I've worked with uh, musicians. I've worked with, you know, general populace. If, if they want to hit me up anytime, they just DM me on uh, on Instagram at LockLoadedMMA. Um, just send me a question. Send me what you're looking for. Um, I work mobily with a lot of people, so if anybody's looking for that, you reach out and I will. Uh, I'll get back to you. George Lockhart, what I love about you the most is your accent because it's, it's proper Hollywood. <laughs> it's funny hearing that that I have an accent. <laughs> I love that's why I love being in uh, Ireland, Saudi, and places like that. People say I have an accent, which lets me stick out versus America. I'm just another one in the crowd.
It's like you're proper. If you was going to picture an American accent, that you're like George Larkart is <laughs> all American, even though you've got a Scottish surname. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I, I, I take pride in that. I, lo I love that. Being a former Marine, that's uh, probably one of the best compliments you can give me. I appreciate that. George, appreciate your time. I will catch you in Saudi. Thank you, sir. Listen, I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 